At the beginning of our story, we get a glimpse of a stunning sunrise in New York City. In the heart of the city, a man named Clay Sanford wakes up from his slumber only to discover his wife Amanda packing their things. When Clay asks her what she's up to, she reveals that she's booked a beachside house in the countryside. Amanda's tired of the hustle and bustle, so she's planning an impromptu family vacation. Clay, who's been yearning for a getaway as well, agrees without much hesitation. In the next scene, the Sanfords hit the road for the countryside. They have two kids, Archie, who's 16 and carefree, and Rose, who's 13 and engrossed in watching the TV show Friends. After a bit of traveling, they arrive at their rented house, which turns out to be absolutely breathtaking. Clay notices an array of fancy drinks in a cabinet but can't quite open it. Meanwhile, the kids waste no time and dive into the swimming pool. Amanda takes a tour of the house and heads to the local supermarket for groceries. On her way back, she spots a bearded man loading up on water and canned goods in his truck, which strikes her as a bit odd. However, she doesn't say anything at the moment. At noon, the family heads to the nearby beach for some relaxation. Everything seems normal with people enjoying their time until Rose, the curious one, spots a large ship in the distance. As she keeps watching, she notices it's getting closer and Clay thinks it might be a big oil tanker. The family takes a nap, but Rose remains fixated on the approaching ship. She suddenly alarms her parents that the ship is still coming their way. Panic spreads among the people on the beach and chaos ensues as the ship crashes ashore. The beach is sealed off and security mentions that the ship's GPS wasn't working. Later, the family returns to their rented home. Amanda tries to learn more about the beach incident on her laptop, but the internet is down. Clay can't watch his favorite game due to a TV signal outage. While they discuss this, they spot wild deer in their backyard, bringing a smile to their faces and making Clay believe it's a good sign. Night falls and the internet is still down. Rose can't watch the last episode of Friends. Meanwhile, the parents are having some alone time in the kitchen when they hear a sound outside, startling them. Clay grabs an object, thinking it might be an intruder, but to his surprise, he finds a well-dressed man and his daughter outside. The man introduces himself as G.H. Scott, the house owner, leaving the family in shock. Clay invites them in to escape the cold, though Amanda is hesitant. Inside, G.H. apologizes for the late visit, explaining that his phone signal is also down. His witty daughter, Ruth, introduces herself. G.H. reveals that during his travels in the city, a sudden blackout occurred, plunging the area into darkness. Ruth adds that they live on the 14th floor, and without the elevator, her father couldn't climb up due to his knee problem. So, they decided to come to their second home in the countryside. G.H. expresses his hope that the Sanfords will allow them to stay for the night, emphasizing the unsafe conditions outside. However, Amanda is furious and vehemently opposes the idea of living with strangers. She asserts that she's the one who rented the place, so it's her right to stay there alone. As tensions rise and Amanda starts shouting, G.H. remains composed and proposes a solution. He retrieves a key from his pocket and, after some effort, manages to open the liquor drawer, revealing money and a pistol inside. He takes out an envelope containing $1,000 and hands it to Clay as a refund in exchange for them allowing them to stay. Clay gladly accepts the offer, but Amanda insists on speaking with him privately first. In their private conversation, Amanda voices her distrust of the strangers, suspecting that they might be scammers planning to rob them. She dismisses all the stories about city blackouts as fabrications. Clay points out that G.H. had the key to the cabinet, but Amanda counters that he could be a housekeeper. Despite her suspicions, Clay reassures her that he'll have a conversation with G.H. before making a final decision. In the next scene, the adults sit down for another discussion. G.H. claims that he purchased the house 20 years ago and mentions that his wife, an art dealer, is on a business trip in Morocco and will be returning the next morning. Despite G.H.'s attempts to reassure Amanda, she still views him with suspicion and requests to see his ID. G.H. agrees but realizes he left his wallet at his workplace, which Amanda finds suspicious. 
During their conversation, a loud, shrill sound from the TV interrupts them and a government announcement declares a national emergency without specifying the cause. In response, Clay decides to allow the father-daughter duo to stay in the basement suite for the night, much to Ruth's displeasure. As everyone goes to sleep, the TV suddenly switches to an update, revealing that the country is under a cyber attack. However, the transmission is quickly lost and no one notices the news. In the morning, Amanda's daughter, Rose, wakes her up, desperate to watch the Friends finale. Amanda, however, informs her that they have more pressing concerns. Amanda checks her phone and is shocked to find breaking news notifications despite having no internet. Alarmed, she wakes up her husband, Clay, to show him the notifications, but they mysteriously disappear as if the hackers are erasing information. Clay decides to venture outside to find someone who knows what's happening. Meanwhile, Rose, sitting by the pool, is captivated by a large group of deer that have gathered outside the house, numbering in the hundreds, possibly thousands. Amanda shares the blackout and warning messages from her phone, indicating a cybersecurity attack. Ruth speculates that hackers may have targeted the powerhouse, crippling the entire system. Subsequently, GH also decides to leave and visit their neighbors a few miles away to gather information. He downplays the significance of the alerts on Amanda's phone, suggesting that it might be a false alarm. Before departing, he reassures his daughter that her mother is fine on her flight and that they will be reunited soon. However, once he's in his car, he begins texting her repeatedly, revealing that they have lost contact with the mother. While these events unfold, Rose tries to share her observation about the deer with her brother, Archie, but he is preoccupied with Ruth and ignores her. On the other hand, Clay finds himself driving aimlessly through the area since the GPS isn't functioning. When he steps out of the car to search for people, the car's radio suddenly blares an alert. It discloses that the consequences of the ongoing cyber attack have triggered a catastrophic environmental disaster, affecting animal migration patterns. Unfortunately, Clay is oblivious to all of this. At the same time, GH arrives at the neighbor's house, finding it in disarray with no sign of any humans. Inside the seaside house, he discovers a satellite phone, but even it isn't working. As he cautiously approaches the beach, he stumbles upon a watch buried in the sand. To his horror, a human hand comes with it when he retrieves it, revealing a dead body on the beach. An airplane has crashed, leaving all passengers and crew members dead. G.H. is shocked by the sight of lifeless bodies strewn around. As he tries to make sense of the situation, another airplane approaches the beach at an alarming speed, prompting him to flee. Meanwhile, as Clay roams the streets, he finally encounters someone, a middle-aged woman who doesn't seem to speak English. The Spanish-speaking lady attempts to warn him about something, but Clay can't understand her. When she persists in seeking help, he becomes frightened and speeds away, ignoring her pleas. He continues driving until he spots a drone releasing red objects in the middle of the road. Terrified, Clay cancels his plan to proceed down that road and makes a U-turn, but the red objects, resembling paper, eventually surround him. Back at home, Archie and Rose venture into the nearby forest. There, Archie is bitten by a tick and Rose spots a deer, although it quickly flees before she can show it to Archie. Undeterred, they explore deeper into the woods and stumble upon an old cabin. Meanwhile, G.H. returns home, soaked in seawater. He lies, claiming he fell into the pool, unwilling to share the truth with his daughter Ruth, fearing she might panic upon hearing about the crashing planes. In her absence, he confides in Amanda about what he witnessed, including the malfunctioning satellite phone, which should have worked when pointed towards the sky. He speculates that the hackers may have disrupted satellite communication. Suddenly, a high-frequency sound blasts from nowhere, causing excruciating pain for everyone, including the children outside. When things return to normal, the kids return home, with Archie feeling dizzy. Amanda instructs the children to go upstairs and then angrily presses Scott for information about the situation. Scott insists on waiting for Clay's return before divulging anything. Amanda brings up the crashing planes, which alarms Ruth as her mother's flight was supposed to arrive that morning. 
Amanda then recalls the bearded man from the department store who was stockpiling supplies, suspecting that he knew about the impending events. Surprisingly, G.H. recognizes the man as Danny, a self-proclaimed survivalist who's always prepared for situations like these. In the next scene, Clay returns home, wearing a worried expression. He produces a red leaflet from his pocket, revealing that a drone dropped thousands of these leaflets written in a different language. Archie deciphers the words which translate to Death to America based on his knowledge from playing online shooter games. Fearing the gravity of the situation, the Sanfords pack their belongings and set off in their car for New Jersey, where Amanda's sister resides. G.H. earnestly tries to persuade them to stay, but the Sanfords disregard his advice and set out on the road again. The roads are eerily deserted, devoid of any signs of people, but Clay remains hopeful that they will encounter others once they reach the highway. After a while, they encounter a blockade of hundreds of cars. Amanda steps out to investigate, but to her shock, she finds no passengers in any of the vehicles. Strangely, all the cars are Teslas, known for their self-driving capabilities. Just as they begin to feel relieved when another Tesla approaches from the opposite direction, Amanda realizes it's also on autopilot. Fearing a potential collision, she hastily instructs her family to get back into their car and quickly drives away. During their escape, they narrowly dodge a barrage of self-driving Tesla cars, which seem to be moving without any human control. The family eventually returns to G.H.'s home, realizing they have nowhere else to go. Amanda once again contemplates planning another escape, but Clay firmly insists they stay put until it's safe. At night, Clay and Ruth indulge in some flavored vape, while G.H. and Amanda share a couple of drinks, marking the first time she's been amiable with him. G.H. recounts a story about a wealthy friend he refers to as an evil cabal who recently asked him to move a large sum of money, hinting at something significant about to happen. The friend also advised Scott to take care of himself. Meanwhile, Rose seeks out Archie and questions if there's any hope of getting out of their situation. She's determined to see the last episode of Friends. Outside, Ruth and Clay are engrossed in conversation when they are startled by a noise. Investigating, they discover a large number of flamingo birds in their pool, an unusual sight for their location, suggesting that something is seriously amiss. G.H. and Amanda, in their inebriated state, start dancing together but refrain from taking any drastic actions. G.H. shares his fears about his missing wife, and Amanda encourages him to stay positive. Suddenly, the piercing loud sound returns, shattering all the lights and frightening the flamingos away. When things return to normal, the Sanfords decide to sleep together in the same bed. Amanda realizes that Archie has a fever but believes he'll be okay. Meanwhile, the enigmatic daughter, Rose, shares a few peculiar stories before cryptically stating, I think I'm done waiting. The next morning, the family discovers that Rose is missing. Suddenly, Archie wakes up with a fever, vomiting blood, and horrified to find his teeth falling out. It appears he's afflicted by a mysterious illness. Archie suspects it's related to the bug bite, so G.H. volunteers to take the ailing Archie to his friend Danny, the survivalist they encountered earlier. Clay, unable to find his daughter, also decides to accompany them. Meanwhile, Amanda and Ruth begin searching for the missing little girl. Their search leads them back to the same old cabin they discovered earlier, where they initially bicker but soon reconcile, realizing they need each other more than ever. As they share their concerns, a startling sound emanates from outside. Elsewhere, the boys reach Danny's house after a lengthy drive. The self-proclaimed survivalist, who takes intruders seriously, greets them with his gun. Upon hearing about Archie's illness, Danny explains that a similar noise occurred in Cuba a few years ago, causing radiation exposure and people losing their teeth, which is likely what afflicted Archie. He also reveals that the country is currently at war as the Russians recently recalled their people from Washington, hinting at the gravity of the situation. Unfortunately, Danny staunchly refuses to provide them with the medicine, prioritizing his own family's safety. Despite George being an old friend and Clay's willingness to pay $1,000, Danny remains unwavering in his decision. He suggests they seek help from the neighbors, who are rumored to have a bunker. 
Meanwhile, as Amanda and Ruth cautiously emerge from the cabin, they are astonished to find hundreds of deer surrounding them. When the alpha deer approaches, possibly with hostile intent, they resort to screaming at the top of their lungs. Fortunately, their desperate tactic works and the animals scatter in fear. Overwhelmed with relief, they hug each other for consolation. Back at Danny's house, G.H. refuses to leave without the medicine and resorts to brandishing his pistol, prompting Danny to aim his rifle in response. Terrified, Clay implores his friend to lower the weapon, but G.H. remains resolute. Clay then pleads with Danny, emphasizing that he's simply doing what any father would for his son. He underscores their shared desire to protect their families, eventually convincing Danny to agree to a trade medicine in exchange for a thousand dollars. With the medicine secured, Danny shares more information. He suspects that the Koreans are behind the chaos, but Clay shows him the leaflet from earlier, which is written in Arabic, leading Clay to believe it might be the Iranians. Danny disagrees, revealing that his friend in San Diego informed him that drones dropped leaflets there too, but in an East Asian language like Korean or Chinese. Danny surmises that multiple nations antagonistic toward the U.S. are collaborating to destabilize and destroy the country. As they return to their car, G.H. explains to Clay that he saw this coming and now understands the situation. He describes a three-stage maneuver employed to destabilize and collapse a country from within. The first stage involves isolation, disabling communication and transportation, leaving people paralyzed and fearful. This leads to the second stage, synchronized chaos, where misinformation and chaos spread, turning people against each other in a struggle for survival. The final stage is civil war as citizens plan coups or uprisings, ultimately causing the country to collapse. Clay and George vow to stick together and lead their families to the neighbor's bunker. In the woods, Amanda and Ruth make a grim discovery. New York City lies in ruins under bombardment with smoke enveloping the entire area. In the final scene, it's revealed that Rose has been in the neighbor's house all along, done waiting. She enjoys a sumptuous meal by herself before heading to the basement where she discovers a secret metal door. With determined force, she opens it, revealing an emergency bunker stocked with years' worth of supplies, including a gym and a greenhouse. A communication system indicates attacks on the White House and major cities with rising radiation levels. Rose disregards this information and excitedly finds the friend's DVD quickly playing the last episode. The movie abruptly ends, leaving the audience in suspense about what will happen next.